Abilene High, Cooper, and Wiley High School students got together at the Wiley Performing Arts Center, all to hear the words and stories of Holocaust survivor Paula Weissman. Ms. Weissman came from her home in New York City to share her experiences from the Nazi concentration camps during World War II. For tonight's top story, KTAB's Noel McKinney has her story as she remembers it 76 years later. I feel that I'm doing good by telling the people, right, what happened. They have to know. Paula Weissman was born December 1928 in a small mountain village called Velki Briezny. When she was just 15, the Nazi soldiers came to her family home. Next thing you know, two, two men came with SS here, SS and they had rifles. After a night of captivity and confusion, Weissman, her family, and her whole neighborhood were packed onto trains and taken to the infamous Auschwitz concentration camp. And what did your father say to you? Your he mom. said, take care of your mother. 15-year-old Paula would never see her mother, father, or brother again after that moment. Now on her own, Weissman faced disease and near starvation at the camp, eventually volunteering to be moved to a working camp in Hamburg. There she witnessed the U.S. bombing operation known as Project Gomorrah. Even though they fell very close, I wasn't afraid. Oh, I had a funny feeling that God sent them there to liberate the, the country. As the Allies advanced, Weissman and her fellow captives were moved from camp to camp, ending up at Bergen-Belsen. In this time, Paula witnessed things so atrocious that her mind still blocks them out, according to her friend and co-presenter, Kelvin Dilks, who researched what happened at the camp she was held at during this time. So Paula got to Bergen-Belsen about the time that Anne Frank died there. The Germans continued to lose ground and resources. Bodies at Bergen-Belsen were piled up. Weissman said they often looked to still be alive. She even recalls seeing a woman she knew from her village among the corpses. I went over and I said, hello, and she don't answer. I realized that she's dead. By the time the English came to liberate the camp, she was in such poor health that they had difficulty distinguishing her from the dead. Weissman would eventually make her way to New York City, where she built a new life. Now, she and Dilks travel to tell her story in hopes that others can learn from it. They're not to dwell on the past. you got to remember it so it doesn't happen again. Because for all the bad, Weissman holds no animosity toward her captors. By uh, hate, they don't accomplish nothing. An understanding she says she was happy to impart to the near 1,000 and Abilene students that heard her speak. Not to feel any animosity, just to say, thank you, God, that, uh, that the world is coming to a better place. For BigCountryHomePage.com, I'm Noah McKinney. Hmm. Thank you, Noah. Ms. Weissman says she considers it a blessing to be able to share her story, only hoping that those who hear it will better understand the realities of that war so that history might not be lost.